This conference will now be recorded. Hi, this is Joanne Wilson, uh, Mayor of Rome. Before our Mayor, meetings, Mayor, yes? I'm sorry, it's not 6.30 yet. We can't start until 6.30. I'm, I'm not starting it, hon. I'm making okay. an announcement. Yeah, then we'll go to 6.30. Thank you, uh, ma'am. Okay, thanks for reminding me, though, Shannon. Before we begin our meeting, let's have a moment of silence in remembrance of the 13 killed in the suicide bombing of the Kabul airport in Afghanistan, and also for their families. Prayers for the 18 or so that were injured, and of course their families. What I'm seeing on the news is ISIS-K is claiming responsibilities. Let's all pray for our country. It is now 6.30 p.m. Thursday, sep oh, not September yet, August the 26th, 2021. We'll call oh. this Rome City. Oops, somebody said something. Okay. Will Carvin be with us, Cynthia? Um, Carvin will be here um, towards the... Uh, end of the regular uh, agenda going into the executive session yes okay so we we're, uh, we're free to start the meeting correct yes yes ma'am okay we do have a quorum here michelle ty is not with us today and we are operating under an exception of the open meetings act that governor abbott has granted However, come September the 1st, that exception is being removed. And as it stands now, we'll go back into open meetings at the Rum Community Center. So keep that in mind. And along that same line, uh, Monday, September the 6th, city offices will be closed in observance of Labor Day. Thursday, September the 9th, may be our first city council meeting in person at 6.30 again at the community center. Monday, September 13th, planning and zoning commission meeting will also be at the community center. And as we have talked about off and on, uh, the police department has gone live on, with an online auction with Renee Bates. You can go to the city Facebook page or the police department's Facebook page for a link. Chief DeBus, you want to add anything to that? Uh, no, Mayor, just, uh, just the links that are out there on Facebook. We have eight vehicles uh, that are up for auction. Um, and uh, if you're interested in, in taking a look, do so, and you can follow the instructions on how to come by and actually see them in person. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you. And with that said, does anybody, any council people have announcements or anything they would like to make? Yes, Sam. Uh, thank you. Uh, Cynthia, could you make me the presenter, please? Okay, yes. sure. Okay, um, I'd like to talk about COVID for a moment and make some announcements. Here's a World Meters Info, Corona statistics, daily new cases in the United States. I want you to notice that in the last month, cases in the United States have really gone up. Okay, pretty steep slope here. Total deaths, I want you to notice the deaths are also going back up. When we start looking at uh, Texas specifically, 
want you to know that in Texas, it's getting especially bad. It's almost reached the peak that we had back in January. Okay, and look how steep that infection rate has gotten with this new Delta variant. I also want you to notice that here in Texas, we have the number of deaths is going up. Now we want to talk about specifically Wise County. Wise County has had 8,800 total cases. We have 55 new cases. 138 people have died in Wise County. We've got one death, one new death. Um, I just want everybody to be careful, be considerate. This is serious. It's coming back. It's not over. Thank you, Cynthia. Yeah, thank you, Sam. And on that note also, and you may have seen it today, Boyd's Elementary School is closed until Monday because they have so many people staff and children with COVID. So, you know, I was pushing for open meetings now. I kind of wish we didn't have that going, but we'll see what happens with the governor for next week. Do we have uh, public presentations, Shannon? Yes, ma'am, we have quite a few and they've all requested that I speak for them. So well, me... how they realize how good you are at this. You well, know? hopefully I don't mess up on any of these. So let me start the timer. And the first one's going to be from Lisa Ann Wilson. She lives on First Street. Okay. I question why the property owner of an adjacent alley would be required to maintain same if they do not own the alley. The same scenario would apply to easement when the property owner does not own the easement property. Before approving such ordinance, I think that, that more thought needs to be put into this by the council. Why are we changing the way Old Town Rome and Bywell operate now? Isn't Public Works staffed to maintain alleys and easements that are not conducive to normal maintenance as has been for happening for years? Why is this so urgent now? In the past, our small town pride in ownership was evident. Public Works maintained the city property and the property owners took care of theirs. Let's have faith in our property owners for upkeep of their property while public works continue to do their job they were hired to do. Do not require citizens to be responsible for property they do not own. Please refer to the council members for September 10, 2020 and statement made by legal counsel Atkins relative to the same problem. No action was taken at that time. Together we can make Rome a good place to live. Lisa Ann Wilson. Okay, the next one, make sure I'm doing it in order, is Deborah B. Craft. And for citizen presentations, I do not agree with the citizens being required to take care of mowing the alleys and the easements unless the property is owned and deeded to the citizen. If the easements or alleys require commercial equipment to maintain them, then the city should maintain it. An example of this would be the bar ditches in Bywell. The drainage ditch in Crown Point and a few other areas that are normal mower riding or push cannot be used in. And then the third public presentation is by Patricia Mitchell. The average 2021 wage increase for private sector employees is 2.8%. In reference to the 2021-2022 budget proposed by the current city administrator, Wages for public works employees, two to three individuals, depending on who you ask, will see a 23% increase from 134, I'm sorry, 134,480 to 192,590. Public works superintendent, a 21% increase from 65,000 to 78,832. Police chief with less than six months on the job sees a 24% increase from 63,000 440,000 to 78,000. Seems he's a friend of Michelle Ty, who was on the council committee that hired him. The city administrator and the city secretary will share a nearly 9% increase. At almost 90,000 a year, Rome City Administrator is paid more than the Wise County judge who is accountable to nearly 69,000 people in the county's 923 square miles. 
compared to Rome's 1,700 people in 4.7 square miles, to whom there appears to be no accountability. Earlier this year, this council approved a one-year severance package if her employment is terminated. Only majors opposed. Only the tip of this $4.3 million boondoggle. Mary, that is all the citizen presentations I have. Thank you, Shannon. Appreciate it. Well, any, as we move on, we've got a lot of things to do, not, not a whole lot typing on the thing. We have the consent agenda, which consists of the minutes of the city council regular session of August the 12th, 21. Do I hear a motion that we accept those minutes? Okay, Josh is making the motion and actually seconding. Shannon, if you'll call for a vote, please. Yes, ma'am. Mayor Pro Tem McCabe? Aye. Thank you. Council Member Priest? Aye. Thank you. Council Member Eason? Aye. Thank you. Council Member Majors? Aye. Thank you. Motion carries unanimously. Thanks, Shannon. We're going to close this meeting and move to a public hearing at 6.40 p.m. on August the 26, 21. It's to hear citizens' input regarding the proposed budget for fiscal year October the 1st, 2021 to September the 30th, 2022. Shannon, do we have anyone on for public hearing? Yes, ma'am. I have had two that asked me to read their statements for them. Okay. First one is from Lisa Ann Wilson, and she lives off First Street. Like others, our budget seems excessive. One thing I noticed that we have not budgeted for generators for our water facilities, both at Bobo and 3433. Hopefully, Rome will not experience the cold and ice storm we saw earlier this year ever again. However, this could be considered a wake-up call to be prepared. Water is precious. We do not want it to, to re face rationing of water. Whether we lose power due to the grid being overloaded or due to a storm, we need to be prepared. Please review the need for generators and do not put it off for another year. Our country is, facing, is still facing uncharted waters. Our future is still uncertain. This budget seems outrageous in many areas and the citizens are noticing. The budget needs to be for our needs and not wants. As a council, you can separate the need from the wants. Please take the time to review this budget line by line and item by item before voting on the proposed budget. It appears to be high in some areas and limited in others. Do not scrimp on things that will make Rome a better place to live. Citizens deserve a budget with purpose and long range outcome, a budget for the people. Lisa Ann Wilson. The next one is from Deborah Beecraft. I am not in favor of the budget because of the high raises that are included. I know our employees do need COLA raises, but the percent they are getting is ridiculous. Even global companies do not give raises in that percent. Most major corporations give a 2.5%. 2 to 4% raise and they are by merit. Please stop the extravagant spending. If we can't fix our roads, sewer and water without borrowing money, then how can you justify the amount of raises you have listed in this budget for 21-22? When, when are you going to represent the citizens and do what is good for them? Mayor, that is all I have that has signed up. Okay, do we have anyone else out there that would like to offer comments? Yes, I would. Okay, and who is I? This is Gail Rother. I live at 199 West Morris in Rome, Texas. Yes, ma'am. Tell us what you would like. Yes, uh, my thoughts on the budget, uh, proposed budget for the fiscal year uh, of October through September 22. Um, First, what is a budget? The dictionary says the budget is an estimation of revenue and expenses over, estimate, uh, over a specified time period. 
Um, I understand our city has had a revenue increase over last year of 17%. That seems like a lot. And I also understand that the pandemic has caused more expenses and will continue to be so. That being said, we seem to be eager to spend every nickel. We need to prepare for the future. We need to stop, start thinking about preparing for the future here in Rome. Uh, we need to stop our overspending. We need to have a sensible budget. We need to treat our budget and our income. We need to treat our income as a, uh, like it was our own personal income, our own personal bank account. You wouldn't do this with your own bank account. We need to have a sensible, thoughtful budget. We need to think about saving for the future. And that will only make Rome a better city. Thank you. Thanks, Gail. Do we have anyone else? This is a yes. public hearing, and you don't have to be signed up. But if you'd like to speak, let me know now. Yes, Ms. Wilson, this is Shirley Mize. OK. Please continue, I, Shirley. OK, I live at 170 Russell, and I oppose the current 2021 to 2022 excuse me, 2022 proposed budget that has been put together by the city administrator and staff before this council. Um, I have a couple of questions. On the revenue fund under court, it only increased from last year to this new current budget, $2,000. And that seems very low. Um, that doesn't make any good sense to me because this uh, court, um, funds on revenue uh, help support um, the expenses for our police department, um, which that went up um, as far as uh, for the police, they're requesting a, uh, almost 90, well, over $96,000 um, in expenses over last year's budget. Um, also on the fire department, the question was that um, they showed um, the budget to be, um, I think, over the amount that it actually met on the budget because they did not have a boot drive because they canceled it for the conditions or for a pandemic on their revenue. So why are we comparing um, the same amount from last year's budget to this year's budget when something was canceled? And I think that they needed to uh, adjust that. The purpose budget for 2021 and 2022 shows the city of Rome got um, an increase and uh, on the administrative it increased $45,700 on police it increased $96,813 on fire it increased $48,353 and water and sewer it, it increased by $460,921 with rolling B checking on water with Fort Worth, does this mean that that current Roland B contract with Rome is needing to be revised and the Rome water expense of what is needed to supply Roland B in water to be lowered on the budget for 2021-22? Where is the summary of accomplishments on this budget? The budget highlights brief overviews, future project plans by department, cost, date to start, finish, Where's the emergency fund? 2021 carries over dollars for projects and non-projects. Where's that? Uh, 2021 um, current asset list attached to the budget. Current bank balance. Future plans for being bringing money into our city besides bonds and certificates of deposit. Where are no notations of future plans in the budget? New development. Supplying water services with costs to complete. What is important for the Your time is up. Thank you. 
Thank you, Shirley. Do we have anyone else there that would like to make comments or speak? If now, now is the time, if, if you don't speak now, we're going to close the public hearing. It is 6.48 p.m. August the 26th, 21, and we're going back into our regular meeting, and we will start under the regular agenda, new business. Item C, discussion and any necessary action regarding the proposed budget for fiscal year October 1, 21 to September 30th, 2022. Cynthia, you have the floor on this one. All right, thank you, Mayor. Um, can you guys see my screen? Yes, ma'am. Okay, let me, I'll make sure. Hold on a second, <laughs> I'm trying to, there we go. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, I just have a few slides. Um, as you know, we've been talking about the budget since March and we started out that conversation um, reviewing our comprehensive development plan, reviewing um, the goals and the visions of the council of each department, um, what the accomplishments have been to date and what the future um, goals and visions are for um, each department um, with uh, obviously with direction from city council. So, and we've been talking about that, I think uh, July 8th, I, I presented the entire presentation and we do have that available um, and we'll be happy to share that. So this is just a few budget highlights that I put together um, for you all. So when you look at, um, the certified values is the proposed budget with the certified values and you just kind of the first uh, column that you see there is the current fiscal year. So fiscal year 2020, 2021, and then uh, 2021 to 22. So you can see that the taxable value did increase, our new improvements did increase, um, the no new revenue rate last year uh, to this year decreased, the voter approval rate from last year to this year decreased. The tax rate, the proposed tax rate um, has decreased from the current tax rate. So you see and highlighted there, the current tax rate is 0.477694 per hundred valuation and the proposed budget is based on a proposed tax rate of 0.450857, which is just below that voter approval rate. And we've broken it down between the M&O rate and the debt rate. And so you can see both the M&O and the debt rate um, did decrease. So when you look at um, the tax rate history for the city of Rome, I think this is a good chart to look at. Um, it just gives you that large, this is from 1993, and I do include um, 20, uh, the proposed tax rate of 2021-2022 um, in that. And you can see that it was steady, it kind of went up and then came down and has pretty much steadily been coming down, um, sharply declining, you know, since really 2015. Um, here's another one to look at. It's just a tax rate comparison. And, um, you know, every city is going to be at different stages of their growth, but um, certainly you, you can kind of get a sense of where we're at with what other cities are doing here. And this is um, the current uh, tax rate. Uh, uh, Council Member Eason. Thank you, thank you, city administrator. Um, I, I just want to make sure on the previous slide, please. Okay, maybe it's two slides up. Uh, so, are city tax rates going down? Yes, sir. I just wanted to to say that city tax rate was good. The, the that's amazing. Our property tax rates going down. Yes. Okay. Sir. Uh huh. Uh, go forward two, please. 
So when we look at uh, Rome in there, we see that New Fairview has a lower tax rate. Um, you don't show um, Aurora because I understand Aurora has a lower tax rate, right? And no, neither of those cities has a fire department or police department, but yet Rome has a lower tax rate than any other city in Wise County. Um, I remember uh, running across that quite recently. So here we have a fire department and a police department, but yet we have a lower tax rate than really everyone else except for New Fairview and uh, Aurora. And yet again, they don't have either one of those. I, I like this chart. Thank you very much. Okay. And I, I can add Aurora to it, sir. Thank you. Okay. Um, so when we look at the budget highlights, um, and I um, I reduced you guys. So if you would if you would speak up if you have a question because I won't be able to see you. When you look at uh, at the budget highlights on the certified values, just wanted to review the revenue. You can see there on um, the percentage breakdown in where the revenue is coming from. 24% um, comes from uh, our uh, sales tax and 20% uh, comes from the property tax. I'm not sure why that's not uh, showing up on the water wastewater side. I believe it's 38%. Um, so I apologize for that. I'm not sure why that's going on. Um, when you look at on the right side, general fund revenue increases, you can see um, fiscal year 2021, um, 2020 to 2021, current fiscal year over um, this next fiscal year, um, what that increase is. And that increase is due mainly to the property values. If you remember, um, we went from um, 167 um, in taxable value up to 183. Um, and also in sales tax revenue. So um, we are on target to be um, well over what was budgeted um, in the current fiscal year. Um, and when you look at um, a budget, it is um, what you see in the proposed budget. Those are projections. Um, you know, we're looking at trends, we're looking at history, and we're making um, educated guesses on um, projections for the upcoming year in, in sales tax revenue, for, ex, for example. Um, in the water wastewater fund revenue increases, primarily those increases are coming from um, rolling water sales, water revenue from Rolling Bee Ranch that will be coming online um, towards the end of next year. Um, wastewater, and then the wastewater rate increase as well is um, another uh, source. Uh, when you look at the expense I've broken them down by department um, there in the graphic and um, this is just the these are the major increases um, in the budget, in the current budget, and they mirror the council priorities. So again, going back to the comprehensive development plan and what the council priorities are and what the department heads presented as what their goals and objectives were and how they were going to reach them. All of this is always tied back um, to those goals um, and primarily um, obviously expressed by the department head of what the need is, but vetted by the council on what their priorities are. And you have spoken loud and clear, I believe over the last several months that health and safety is a priority, retaining and attracting experienced professional staff, human resources is a priority and, and code compliance. And so there you see the amount of money dedicated to each of those for employee salaries. Um, we we are um, for all equity, COLA, and merit increases, it, it equals $78,908. Um, and you can see for police, they are looking at radio and tasers at 87.5, and fire is adding that shift work, which they've been talking about um, for a while and building towards that. Um, I did want to delve into the. Okay. 
uh, a little bit, and this is a TML salary survey that um, all cities have access to. And just so you know, what I did was I looked at cities of similar size and geographical location um, in the salary survey, and we have 19 employees and um, 17 of those 19 employee salaries are at are, are under 50 percent of the market average and um again i'm not sure why that is gone um, i actually sent this graphic to all of you in an email recently um, as well but um if you remember, there was a, an article, and this is just a couple of weeks ago with Bridgeport, and they made the comment that their employee salaries were at 82% of the market. So just for some comparison, um, you can see what that what that looks like. Um, two of the 19 uh, employees are they're 60% under uh, uh, under um, the market average. So. Um, Certainly, uh, again, I think the council is is wanting to make sure that they retain uh, professional and experienced staff. Um, when you look at um, the property values and the Ms. average Norther? price of a home, Ms. Um, Ms. Josh has a question. I'm sorry. Yes. Go ahead. Josh. It, sorry. Can you go back two slides while we're on the topic of salaries, please? Here. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, I know you've explained it to me before, um, but maybe you can put it in some layman's terms for to help everybody understand that I know there's a lot of chatter about uh, the pay raises that people are calling it. I don't think they're necessarily pay raises, just if I remember correctly, prorated because they only work part of the year. Um, but can you explain that a little bit for everybody why those are going up? The salaries? Yes, ma'am. Sure. Um, when you look at, I mean, the total num, the total dollar amount going to employee salaries out of a four point three million dollar budget, um, the increase is seventy eight thousand. So twenty eight thousand is uh, going for equity adjustments to the different employees, and again, that's going to be based on that salary survey. So. Um, for instance, if um, the, I'd have to go back and look, I don't have it memorized where everybody's at, but most of our employees, 17, are under that 50% market average. So it's just trying to get them a little bit closer to that 50%. Um, and that's $28,000 across 17, uh, 19 employees. Uh, council member, Eason, do you want, can I finish this and then call on you? Yes, thank you. Okay, so out of 20, 78, 28 is dedicated um, for equity adjustments, and the 50,000 then are the 2% for COLA and 2% for merit. Keep in mind, the 2% for merit, I mean, that's going to be the supervisor's um, at the supervisor's discretion based on a performance evaluation. Is that what you were looking for, Council Member McCabe? Uh, yes, please. Uh, thank you. Um, I'll let Sam ask, and I just wanted to follow up with one thing. Okay. <laughs> Council Member Eason. Yeah. Um... I just did a real quick 78,908 divided by the 19 employees. That comes out to only 41.53 per year per employee. So uh, doesn't seem like anybody's getting any kind of big chunk of money. Well, um, I, yeah, there's not a 25% increase for any employee. Right. So I, I think uh, I think somebody's math might be a little off because. Again, you're you're only talking a little, just a hair over four thousand dollars per person per year, right? Correct. Um, On average, yes. Yeah, that's yeah, that's that's quite reasonable. When 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 you start talking about the merit portion of it is at the discretion of their supervision, right? And the cost of living increase was only two percent. Um, seems like we're uh, we might be sliding them a bit. But we got to fit. Everybody's got to fit into the budget. So, thank you. Yes. 
uh, Mayor Pro Tem, and I'm sorry, I <laughs> demoted you for a moment there, Mayor Pro Tem McCabe. <laughs> it's all right. Can you go forward one slide, please? Thank you. So what you're telling me looking at this slide is that most of our city employees are uh, a majority, uh, majorly underpaid uh, compared to their counterpartners in most of the area? <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. That's what I thought. So as much work as we get done around here, they are definitely underpaid. Thank you. Okay. I believe that a lot of them are underpaid, but I there are a lot. I know, for instance, I think it a math is off looking at the budget. It is more than seventy eight thousand nine hundred and eight. Um, for instance, court is getting, which I think she's well deserved for the years that she's put in, is getting. A raise, but we'll go over that later on. If you can just keep going through the slides, but I think I think that there are some that need do need raises that have done their duties over the years. So, okay. Well, like I said, just the the purpose of that graph was just to demonstrate that you know 17 of the 19 employees are paid under 50 percent of the market average and there's only um two that are paid you know uh, under 60 percent so that was just the purpose of that graph um just this is i believe the final slide and um, i just wanted to highlight with this one the average home value of 250 using the average home value of 250 um with the tax rate this current year um the average city tax is 1194 uh, with the proposed tax rate um, going from the 0.477694 down to the 0.450857, um, you're looking at um, the average homeowner of paying a city tax of 1127, which is a $67 average tax decrease. And that is it. Any more questions for Cynthia? Okay, we'll move on to regular agenda, new business, um, item B. Yes. You, so the you still need to take a vote here, and um, the recommended vote is that you, you're making a motion to postpone the approval of the proposed fiscal year 2021-2022 budget until September 9th council meeting as the public hearing on the proposed tax rate and action on ratifying the proposed tax rate will take place on the 9th. Okay, now you want to do the budget and the tax rate at the same time? No, ma'am, they need to be separate. They need to be separate. Okay, and Sam? I'd like to go ahead and make that motion to postpone the uh, decision on the budget until the September 9th meeting. Okay, do I hear saying yeah. real quick, Cynthia, I had a question. There was a change of the on the bond principle from the previous budget to this budget. I'm sorry, what? There was a from the budget that you gave us from the last budget to this budget in the wastewater um bond principle, it was seventy thousand. And it was 75,000 in this one. I didn't know if it was an error on the. Um... Yeah, it was 75 is correct. That's that's okay. actually the principal. Um, and I, that's the principal payment or. <laughs> yes, that's the principal, not the. Um, it is. We do have a motion on the floor. We need a second or we need to see, see if it's going to die. Have a second, Josh, a second. It, Sam, would you repeat your motion? I move that we postpone a decision up or down on the budget until the September 9th meeting. Okay, we have a motion and we have a second. Shannon, will you do the, the duty? Yes, ma'am. Mayor Portem McCabe? 
Aye. Thank you. Councilmember Priest? Aye. Thank you. Councilmember Ethan? Aye. Thank you. Councilmember Majors? Aye. Thank you. Motion carries unanimously. So if I'm understanding life correctly, item C regarding the proposed budget will be not actually made official or voted on until September the 9th. Correct. Is that what everybody is saying. Okay, now Cynthia, how does that affect item D on the tax rate? Well, it's the, it's the same thing. So um, on the proposed tax rate, um, you are going to take a record vote on the proposed tax rate tonight. Can we do that if we don't do the budget? If we don't approve the budget? Yes. Yes, ma'am. We're, we're only voting on a proposed tax rate. We're not taking any action on a rate or the budget until September 9th. Okay, but we don't need to have the budget approved before we figure the tax rate. No, ma'am, we need this record vote for the um, notice that goes into the paper for the public hearing for the tax rate next week, next meeting. So we need to have a proposed tax rate, which is what the proposed tax rate is the 0 0.450857. And that way we can tell, put in the notice that's what the proposed tax rate is. And at the next meeting on September 9th, we will take action on the budget and then we'll take action to ratify the tax rate. And this is prescribed by state statute in Senate Bill 2. Yes, Elaine. I make a motion that we ex uh, accept the proposed tax rate for 2022. And do I have a second? Sam is second. Okay, Ms. Shannon, this is your job. Thank you, ma'am. I'm just writing down the tax rate. Proposed tax rate, <laughs> council member priest was 0 0.450857. Thank you. Mayor Pro Tem McCabe. Aye. Thank you. Council member priest. Aye. Thank you. Council member Ethan. Aye. Thank you. Council member Ma Majors. Aye. Thank you. Motion carries unanimously. Okay, so we've got a proposed tax rate of 0. 0.450. And I can't read the rest of 857. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so we're moving on. Well, we're passing item E. We don't have the information available yet. We're moving to item F. And discussion and any necessary action regarding the acceptance of Bywell phase two roads. Hey, Cynthia, this is yours again. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Um, well, you have the agenda commentary in front of you. Um, as you know, I've been keeping you apprised of uh, the um, uh, status of the paving of phase two roads out in Bywell. Um, they did um, finally start, you know, we had a rainy spring and they finally started in July and completed that project on a, uh, August 13th, um, a couple, <clears throat> excuse me, a couple of weeks ago. Um, it was inspected and um, all, the all along the way by uh, our public works director. And you have the letter from our engineer who was did an on-site visit. Uh, myself and the attorney have both signed off on this and are recommending acceptance of those roads into the city's maintenance program. Okay, any comments from anyone? Yes, George. Thank you. Um, so does that mean the county came back out there and fixed their mistake that they did as well? Well, we are um, working with them on that. That's actually a separate issue, um, but we are working with them on that. Council Member okay, I'm gonna suggest if, you, if we wanna talk about that aspect of it, we probably need to go into executive session. Okay. 
Okay, and speaking of which, we are now going to close this regular meeting. Mayor, are you yes. going to vote on that? Huh? Well, we need a motion on agenda item F unless we are going to continue it in executive session. I thought that's what we were going to do. The separate item was going to be discussed in executive session. Okay, relative to the county roads. Yes, Josh. Yes, I make a motion that we take staff's recommendation and approve the roads and by well phase two. Sam and Ashley and Elaine were all seconding it. So, mm -hmm. Shannon, you pick the one you want. I think Councilmember Priest raised her hand first. Okay. Okay. Council, I'm sorry, Mayor Pro Tem McCabe? Aye. Thank you. Councilmember Priest? Aye. Thank you. Councilmember Eason? Aye. Thank you. Councilmember Majors? Aye. Thank you. Motion carries unanimously. Okay, now we can close. Wait, Sam's got a. a yes, Sam. Um, I, I'd like to go back and look at uh, agenda item E. Um, I realize the ordinance may not be ready to go, but we had still we still have it on the agenda and it gives me the opportunity to talk about it. Um, this is the discussion and any necessary action regarding an ordinance pertaining to the maintenance of right of ways, easements and alleyways. Right. Um, I think there's been a tremendous amount of confusion over property owned uh, property owned by the individual and an easement. Just because there's an easement through the property doesn't mean the citizen doesn't own it and isn't responsible for it. If they still own it, it doesn't matter where the easement goes. Because um, I jokingly said last at our last meeting that if we want the city to start taking care of easements just because the city has an easement, then that means the city would then be responsible for mowing my entire front yard because my whole front yard is, uh, is in the easement for the city. So I think we need to make certain that we're very clear that people are responsible for maintaining their own property, no and matter think, what the easement is. I'm sorry, Sam. I think that's why we are waiting for Carvin and company to finish the ordinance and then y'all will get a chance to review it and it should be more specific on who does what to whom. I understand, but as they're as they're drafting this ordinance, I think we need to uh, make the the views of the council, you know, apparent to them, right? I mean, does anyone here think that the city should be mowing some person's private property? Josh wants to speak. You're muted. There you go. I'm I'm with you, Mr. Eason. Um, you know, we just had uh, the people come out and put in the cable internet out here in, uh, in in Crown Point, and they were all over people's yards. But there's those easements that the city does own, but it doesn't mean that we don't take care of them. Uh, as far as I remember, as long as it's your yard, you got you got to take care of it. You got to mow it. You got to do whatever you got to do to take care of it. Yes, the city can come in and do work if need be, um, but you still own that property. So I think um, I, I think I'm with you that yes, I know uh, staff and everybody's working on these ordinances, uh, but yes, I do believe on this particular one, since there is so much concern around there, that there may need to be some council input as to some of the formalities and details that we need to make sure are in that ordinance. So yes, I, I think we need to make this as clear as possible on this one. Yes, Ashley. I think for the alleys, I think the city should maintain those. Um, but for the easements, and it's going to be a little different because, um, you know, the citizens probably will maintain them. Crown Point it might be a little difficult because of the back where the yards match up so and the where and the easements and everything it's it's going to be difficult for us but 
we'll have to cross that bridge when we get to it. So, um, so, but Sam, I know you were joking around with your front yard as well as my front yard. Um, it is Eastman as well and we maintain it, but I think alleys are a little different. Um, but I've been doing my research from other cities, what they, um, off what they do for their cities. So, I mean, we have to just do, you know, do our, um, you know, you know, look at other cities. So we know what, you know, what other cities are doing that what we should offer our citizens is the best option. So. Anybody else? Any more comments before we move to executive session? And we're going to end our regular council meeting at 7.19 p.m. August the 26, 2021, and go into executive session under section 551.071, consultation with an attorney. And that probably will refer to wages, section 551.087, deliberations regarding economic development negotiations and this is relative to the Wellflex side. So guys let's move it quickly and go to executive session. <laughs>